We're going to be in John chapter 10 today, so it's page 900 or 819, 819 in your yellow Bible, and uh, if you have your own Bible, it's John chapter 10, and we're talking about the voice, hearing and following God's voice in your life, and where, where this came from is uh, I, I was sitting down with people, and they were sharing what it is that just these big moments in their life where they made a commitment to follow Christ or they experienced God in a way that they hadn't before, a deeper way, a powerful way. As everyone went to share their stories, everyone had a moment where they said, I heard God's voice. And I I thought, well, I wonder what's that like in the Bible? So I looked up God's voice in the Bible and guess what? It's there a lot. I mean, you go to the, I mean, you think about it, creation story. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And how did he create? And God said, let there be light. It's almost as if God thinks communication is (laughs) important. Communication is crucial. If you don't believe me, get married, don't talk, see how it goes. (laughs) I'm serious. When I get in trouble with my wife, what is it about? Communication. I'm like, but I'm listening. It's like, you're not listening. No, I can say back what you just said. I promise. Guys have this ability, right? We got like a recorder. We just, boop. <laughs> and you know you got to be able to spit it back so you don't get in trouble. But actually engage, do something about it. And, well, now you're asking for way too much. <laughs> Communication's crucial, and it's a two-way street, isn't it? It's two ways. It's got to be both ways. And in whatever relationship, maybe you're married, maybe you're dating, you're in a family situation, it's with friends. But communication is crucial for a relationship and it's got to go both ways. So guess what? If God made us and we long for a relationship and communication, then maybe God made us to communicate with him. And that God is speaking to us and then God wants us to open our hearts and speak to him. And this year, we said we're going to start this year with three focus. And I hope that you jump in on this. The first one is this, is that we're going to pray. Every day, every week, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Every, this week, we'll say it today. Every week through this series, we'll say the Lord's Prayer as a way of, this is Jesus. Here's how to pray. And what does, I think it's, it teaches us how all through the day we can talk to our Father who's in heaven. Um, we're going to pray every day. We're going to read the Bible every day. You know, um, now um, we have a weekly we send out through email. And if you don't get that weekly, it's because we don't have your email or you haven't filled out an info card and it's punishment on you. (laughs) But if you would fill that out and put your email, we send out a New Life Weekly on there this week. Not only last week we sent out, the. it's actually, you can see now the sermon, hear it and see it on YouTube and then there's a link, you just click that, and then also you can click to where you can get a Bible reading plan um, through uversion.com, and they have personalized Bible reading plans that you can do and be a part of, and so that, that, that's going out. So we wanna, wanna read the Bible, we wanna pray, we also wanna listen. And I'm gonna try something new this year, I'm gonna be listening to people and conversations, and maybe that's something you'll try. And that, you know, here's what happens. When we do these things, it increases our cell reception with God. How many of you got a, who gets, okay, you don't get cell, or let's start with this. You get cell reception here, okay? So your cell phone works at Kalahalia. Let me see your hand. And we'll find out what carrier you have. Okay, how many of your cell phone does not work here? Yeah, huh? Right. Well, is it because your cell phone's broken? No, you're just in an area where you're not getting reception. And I think sometimes that's what happens in our life. In fact, I, I assist, I'm an assistant coach at Central Kitsap, and our gym for basketball, yeah, our gym there is so loud. We were talking about it on our bus ride home on Friday. It is so loud. Actually, I think we were, it wasn't our bus ride, but anyways, we were talking about it. We were talking, you know, it's so loud. And the band, when they're playing, I just love our band, and it sounds awesome, but it's loud. And, you know, sometimes when you go to talk to the players or to each other, you find yourself always, you're just like, hey. And it just feels like you're like, I'm talking, but no one is listening, and there's so much noise. And I just wonder if that's how God feels sometimes. 
That he's, you say, well, I don't know if I've heard God before. I don't know if there really is a God because if there was a God, maybe he would speak. And how do I know if it's God? And, and I've never felt that in my life. How do I know that's not just me? And I wonder if he's up there going. <laughs> you see, before we jump into John 10, three quick things I just noticed when I read through the Bible and looking at the voice, I saw this. One is this, is that God speaks all through the Bible. I mean, it's one of the major things. God speaks. Creation, God speaks. Jesus is called the word of God. Revelation ends with an invitation from God speaking to us. It's all one story of God speaking. Second thing I noticed is God spoke in all different ways. Sometimes it was audible, and I I haven't heard the audible voice of God, although I've had some moments that it felt just as real. Sometimes, though, it was something that was an impression on somebody's heart. They felt led by the Holy Spirit. It was a small voice that they heard inside their heart. Sometimes it was by special circumstances. One, in one moment, it was a donkey speaking to somebody, which was the origination of the movie Shrek. <laughs> Sometimes it was just a piece of heart that somebody had. and others, it was God spoke through somebody else. That's why it's important that we have people who love us that also love God. And the Bible says, who walks with the wise grows wise, and a companion of fools suffers harm. So it just helps. We help each other. So there's all these variety of ways God spoke in visions and dreams. And, but the whole point was God was speaking. In fact, you know what was interesting was this, and this is my third thought on this, is that, that as I read through the Bible, there was never points of people saying, is that you, God? They weren't wondering if it was God. They were just wondering if they were going to actually want to do it. Now, I just think that maybe that's more of the case. In fact, as I looked through it, there were three things that I th- felt kept people from hearing God's voice. In fact, it wasn't that what God wasn't speaking, is that for some reason we weren't hearing. You see, you can turn God up or tune him down. In some ways, it was distraction. We have a world that's full of distraction. We actually have something that's called noise pollution. It's very interesting. The word noise, Latin root of that, you know what it means? Seasickness. You can just hear all these noises and You know, you think about what voice do I follow? And you kind of live life kind of like this, not certain and just following whatever it is that you think is going to please you. Sometimes it was disobedience. God said something. People said, ah, didn't do it or I'll get to it and never got to it and delayed it. But it's interesting how, like, if you tune God out long enough, you stop hearing him. And if you want to hear God's voice, maybe go back to the last thing he said and do that. And then this third one, that's where I want to spend our time today. It was distrust. Distraction, disobedience, distrust. I mean, it was, uh, go, go, go to the beginning part there of the Garden of Eden and creation. And here's Eve. And God's told Adam and Eve, you're free to eat from any of the trees in the garden. Don't eat from this one. Of course, there's a choice because love demands choice. And don't eat from this one. And the serpent shows up as Eve is kind of looking at this tree and what it is that we're not supposed to eat, just checking it out. And the serpent says to her these words, did God really say? And I just wonder if maybe that's the issue with us, is we're just not certain we can trust God's voice. Is it really that we don't hear God? Or there's times that we do sense and hear God, but we're not certain that we want to follow, because the issue is trust. Our big idea coming up on the screen from John 10 is right here. We follow the voice that we trust the most. Care who you are, what direction you're going, it just seems to be true that whatever voice it is, and it might be, well, I just listen to my own voice. And, you know, or the, whatever the voices are that are out there in our culture, in our world, that are calling to us, we follow the voice that we trust the most. And Jesus said this in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Would you go ahead and say that with me, John 10, 27? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. We're going to be on that scripture for six weeks. That'd be a good one to know. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow. And when Jesus went to talk to people about what it's like to hear God's voice and follow... He used the analogy of a shepherd and sheep, which for us, maybe we're like, um, I can't really get my arms around. 
But in their culture, in that day and for where they lived, you probably either were a shepherd or you knew a shepherd. And so it definitely made sense for where they're living. Now, the context of what's happening here in John chapter 10 is the former chapter, Jesus had healed a man who was born blind. He healed him, but he healed him on the wrong day according to the rules. And the religious people are upset. So the religious people are mad, and that's what religion does. Religion elevates rules over people. And so they're upset, and so Jesus goes, and he walks right into this, and he begins to talk to them about maybe who's the one not hearing God's voice here. And so he starts in John chapter 10, verse 1, he says this. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And the first thought I had looking at this is, so I was thinking about God's voice, and what does it sound like? And I noticed that phrase, anyone who sneaks over the wall. And one of the things I've noticed in my life, and we see through Scripture, is that God's voice is very, very honest. It's honest, it's up front, it's through the gate. What I mean by that is this, okay? In that culture, in those days, you would have like a big sheep pen. And really, you'd have shepherd with their sheepfold, and they'd bring them in, and they'd all, and so you'd have multiple shepherds with their sheep all in this one pen, and then they'd have just one gate out. That way they can kind of like, you know, have the best security possible. And at night, what they would do is pay somebody to lay across that gate, so that way no one would come in and steal the sheep, So if you wanted to steal a sheep, what would you have to do? Sneak over the wall. And it's interesting that he's now the one talking about maybe a thief that snuck over the wall as he's pointing to religious people not following God's voice. You know, when it comes to hearing God's voice, I've noticed a few things. One, and I have like, I'm just going to call these like ground rules. Um, But the first thing I've noticed is this, is that when God speaks, it all lines up with what's in Scripture, it's through the gate. I have a special revelation from God, and no one else knows this, and so come hear me, and, and it gives me somehow power when I do that, and I'm sneaking over the wall of what I'm going to say to you to somehow get you to do what I want you to do, and I guess it's focused on me. That would be wrong. That would be the thief and the robber. God's going to be honest. It's going to be through the gate. It's going to line up with Scripture. You're not going to read that and go, I had no idea. Love your neighbor. I could give it a shot. I wonder what he means by neighbor. Oh, maybe my neighbor. I think it's funny that neighbor includes everyone but your neighbor. Could be your neighbor. Could be anyone you meet. There's no, I mean, think about this. God's word is right here, there's no surprises. Read it. And when I think about this, uh, is the issue that God doesn't speak or is it that we're not listening? It's through the gate. And so when, I, when, I, when I'm wondering in, in, in times in my life where I feel like God wants me to do this or sense God saying this, or I wonder about this, one of the things you have to go is this, is how does it line up with Scripture? Certainly, as I say, nothing unscriptural, also nothing weird. That just might be a personal rule because of just some of my experience in the past where people were saying, God's told me you need to jump off a bridge. And I'm like, that's weird. He'll save you and catch you and you'll fly. And I'm like, um, huh. And I'm not saying that faith doesn't go beyond reason, but it doesn't go against it. And not only did God create and communication and create you, he also gave you a brain. And it even honors God when you use it. (laughs) Nothing unscriptural, nothing weird, and then nothing controlling. People try to use this phrase, God told me, to control other people. That's how you have cults. If you find that following God's voice is isolating you from everyone that loves you and loves God, there's a problem. People use it to control. I want to control you, so I'm going to say, God told me I'm going to marry you. That's weird. God told me to tell you no. <laughs> Say, second thing I wrote up here is this is God's voice is honest. It's familiar. 
Someone who really knows you. I think it's one of the reasons why we might even feel like it's our own voice, because it's so familiar. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he's gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. They follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They'll run from him because they don't know his voice. And when you hear God's voice speak to you, it sounds like the one that created you. You know, I know my wife's voice when she calls. I actually know by what she says how upset she is at me. <laughs> you know? Um, interesting, okay, the way in that culture it would work is, okay, you, you would lead your sheep out during the day to pasture, and so all the shepherds are with their sheep, and then the shepherds start leading them in at night, and they're going to have somebody sleep. And, and what the shepherds do to kind of lead the sheep and where they want to take them, and when it's time to get up and go, and the sheep have, a, they have their own, each shepherd has their own special sheep call. And I'm not going to do one here today. <laughs> I want to show off, but... They have a unique, and, and it's interesting is, you know, sometimes sheep, we call them dumb. They don't get credit for this. Actually, sheep have an amazing ability to pick out their own shepherd's voice. And so in the midst of confusion and seek sickness and noise, they can hear their shepherd's voice and follow. And all of the shepherds are calling out their unique sound. I mean, think about this, and all the sheep line up to where they're supposed to go and who they're supposed to be with. Some of you have a dog, and you can't even get that one dog to come. Or you're dragging that dog by its leash. Get over here. That would be a really far pull. Um, <laughs> God doesn't yank us around on a, on, on a leash. He doesn't drive us like cattle. God leads us with his voice. And um, when God speaks with his voice, that's how he leads. And you either follow or you don't. One of the things you'll find is this, is the closer you follow, the clearer the voice. Okay, the third thing I wrote up here is this, is that God's voice is good. This is someone who wants the best for you. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. This is, this is the thief, someone that, you know, and this is the deception of the devil, is he tries to swip, switch it around. God's voice isn't good. And if you really want to have fun and have a great life, you need to not follow God. In fact, I used to think growing up that the way to have the best life is to live on, like do your own thing, push God away, right before you die, say, God, I'm sorry, receive Christ, die, go to heaven. Perfect. That's called deception. In fact, in the garden, Eve, she's there. And Satan, the serpent, what is he, did God really say? He said, did God really say that you're not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? Isn't it interesting that whenever there's temptation, it, the, the temptation is that God's trying to limit our freedoms and he doesn't want you to have fun. Oh man, God doesn't want you to have fun. No, because that would be fun. Okay, in the garden, what did God really say? What God really said was, you're free to eat from any of the trees, but just this one. You have a million good decisions and how many bad ones? One. There's got to be a choice. And isn't it interesting that just like the devil, just flip it around and make it look like God's trying to withhold something good from you. Now, the Bible says in Psalms 34, taste and see that God is good. You follow God's voice, you're going to find this. God's voice is good. And God, he knows you. He knows how he made you. He knows what's going to bring the most amount of joy to your life. And he knows what it's like when you're able to follow that voice and really use your life to help other people. The fourth thing I wrote down is this, is that God's voice is love. This is someone who would die for you. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees the wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I'm the good shepherd and I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too, that are not in this sheepfold, and I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice. There will be one flock and one shepherd. 
God's voice is love. You know, um, it says here that when a wolf comes, this is one of the things that's going to happen in life, you guys, is this. You're going to have times where a wolf shows up in your life. And when the wolf shows up in your life, that's where you're going to find out who really loves you and who is just hanging out. Because the people who love you, they're not going to run. They're going to stay and fight for you. The hired hand is like, I get 10 bucks an hour. Wolf comes. Nah, it's not worth that much. We're like, here's a sheep. Here's a sheep sandwich. Here's a big sheep mac. Here's a... But the good shepherd loves the sheep. And actually will fight and lay down if he has to even die. And think about this. This is for the crucifixion. Is Jesus saying something here? Like maybe that the real leaders that love God's people are the ones that will die in order that God's people can be saved. Who do you have in your life that would die for you? The Bible says, for God so loved the world he gave his son, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Part of being a church is that we learn to love each other to the point where we'll fight for each other and not be hired hands. And Jesus is speaking against a religious community who were getting paid to lead, but they were hired hands. And when wolves showed up, they took off and the sheep were scattered. And the Bible says that God, in fact, they would know the Old Testament as he's speaking to them. They know in Psalms that it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. They know what it said in Ezekiel 34 when God prophesied against the bad shepherds who only cared about themselves. And he talked about the good shepherd who goes after those who are lost, those who are broken, those who are injured, those who are weak, those who are sick. That that's the heart of a good shepherd. And even Jesus talking about what it's like that God would want not even that one sheep would perish. That if, there's a hun- if there were a hundred sheep and one took off, God's going for that one that's missing. That's the heart of a good shepherd. And so when you think about who it is that you need to listen to in your life, and when you hear God's voice, whether or not, should I follow, should I follow? Think about this. Who's laying down their life for you? And if you follow a voice that's just a hired hand, where does that lead you? The question and the action I want to leave you with today is simply this, is what is it that God, the voice of God, is saying to you? A few times in my life, I've really sensed God's voice. Sometimes they're big things, sometimes they're little things, but the little things are always big things to God. Sometimes I push it away. I'd like to say I always, I hear God's voice and I always follow that voice. But that wouldn't be true. Sometimes I hear it and I go, eh, later, I'll get to it, I'm going to. I do know, uh, you know, I had the moment where I was working at the um, college library and uh, Carrie walked into that li- library in the summer and I didn't know her and she didn't know me and I, I sensed God speak to my heart saying, you're going to marry her. And I knew the rules not to tell her because then you're a stalker. <laughs> okay, so don't do that. Serious. And, um, you know, uh, just, and I knew she was seriously dating somebody else. And when that didn't work out, I was like, yes. <laughs> and just to step into it. And I believe that, you know, if you sense you're hearing God's voice, you can take steps. And what you're going to see is this, is that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I, I remember with uh, New Life getting started, it wasn't like I was sitting there going, I'd like to start a church. But it was hearing God's voice and then taking a step. Moving to Silverdale, I was on Highway 3, driving. Highway 3, giant tree. Okay. Um, I was, I was, stop. But it's hearing, hearing a voice. And just recently, I had like a real small impression just to like reach out to somebody or make a phone call. And, you know, it was interesting. I just wonder now as I look back, what if I wouldn't have made that call? Because a number of things happened. And I'm just one person on God's team. We're all on his team. But, you know, you think about this. I wonder if in this series, I don't know if it's going to be a big thing or a small thing. And the small things are big things. But that God's going to lead you to do something. Are you going to follow? I don't know what God's going to say to you. I have no idea.
But what would happen if you heard God's voice and you took some steps to follow? And I just, what I want to lead us to do is this. Let's get our cell reception with God up. Let's be in prayer. Let's read the Bible. And some of you, this will be new to you. You're going to start to read the New Testament for the first time. You jump in somewhere in the Old Testament. I don't know. Um, And then let's really listen. Let's really focus on listening and see where God leads us, okay? Would you join me in prayer? Uh, Father, thank you for our time here today and what you're doing all over this world and that you love us and care about us is amazing. I pray for people who are here today who are hearing your voice saying, come, follow me. If you're hearing that voice today and you want to follow Christ, receive forgiveness of sins and to turn towards him in this moment where you're seated, say to God, yes, I will follow. And Lord, we also repent of not praying, um, of getting so caught up in our own lives that we just, you're, you're just like the last thought. Uh, we repent of not reading the scriptures. Uh, you gave them to us, and it's just a miracle that we even have them. And we ask God that you would help us to really listen, because uh, we get in a lot of trouble when we don't listen. <laughs> And Lord, in this listening, we'd see that you're good and our relationships would explode and be alive and marriages would just be so filled with love and joy and friendships would come alive. And Lord, you'd use us all week and hearing what you're saying and reaching out in small ways and loving and caring and serving. And some people here might have a major life change because they're gonna follow your voice. Or your people, you're our shepherd. You're a good shepherd. We want to follow you. Would you say the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.